Lovely. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. Right now, though, we have something else to talk about. We have Dr. Lauren Brown with us, who is a doctor of traditional Chinese medicine, and Shelley Poitras is uh, one of your patients right. as well, right? We're talking about infertility. 15% of North American couples have an infertility problem, but Dr. Brown, how can acupuncture help? Well, in a nutshell, it actually helps increase blood flow to the reproductive organs. And blood is a messenger that carries nutrients, oxygen, hormones, as well as carries away, carries away um, waste. So if there's adequate blood supply with good nutrition, good oxygen, mm -hmm. then the cells thrive and therefore better egg quality. All right, now Shelly, what happened to you? Did you know about this beforehand or? No. <laughs> <laughs> now you'd had one child and then what yes. happened? And then I was planning my second mm -hmm. and my first one worked out perfectly as planned. And so when I started planning the second one, I had exact time frame in mind and um, it Didn't, wasn't working out. Yeah, it doesn't quite like, work out that way What's sometimes. going on? Yeah. So, Three months after it wasn't working out, I started doing some research on the computer and about after five cycles, I called Lauren up and said, you know, I just realized my cycles are different now since I've given birth. Mm -hmm. I don't know what caused it to change, but I was basically ovulating a lot later in my cycle. Mm -hmm. And I had read through acupuncture that you could regulate your cycles. That's kind of scary though, isn't it? To go to acupuncture to help with pregnancy? No. No? Did you find <laughs> no. that? No? No, because I thought it's more, it's natural. Mm -hmm. I'd never had it before and I'd wondered what, would the needles hurt or what would it be like, but I figured it was a natural mechanism to help assist. You must get a lot of nervous women who come to you uh, because this is a very sensitive subject. It definitely is. Yeah. And, um, and we do our best to reassure them what we're doing and that it can be helpful. In the, the fact that it's been used for over 2,000 years and over a thousand years documentation to treat fertility in Chinese mm -hmm. medicine, we do have a good history behind us. And once they sit on the table and they have the treatment, that relaxation starts immediately and after that, they're all game. Now I have to bring up your background here okay. because you were an accountant. I used to be, or I still am a chartered <laughs> accountant, but I don't practice anymore. Right, and now you're a doctor of traditional Chinese yes. medicine. How did that happen? <laughs> well, I first did a science degree and I got a little sidetracked and became a CA. But during that, I had health issues myself. Digestion was my problem. And uh, I went to a Chinese herbalist, mm -hmm. and, it, and it solved it. And, uh, and yeah, and the rest was history. After that, I just became interested, and one day I decided this is what I want to do. Why focus on women's reproductive health, though? Why focus on these two things? That I just fell into. I was actually treating digestion. That was my area that I wanted to treat. Mm -hmm. But most of the people that came to me were women. And while I was treating their digestion, I was getting rid of all their PMS and pain with their menstruation. So I ended up becoming the PMS guy. <laughs> and That's a nice title. <laughs> yeah. That's and then somebody had seen Randine Lewis, who ended up becoming my mentor. She's a doctor of Chinese medicine that focuses and specializes on infertility. Mm -hmm. And Randine said, look, she's in Houston. You can't see me on a weekly basis in Houston. This woman was from Vancouver. Find somebody in Vancouver that treats fertility. And this woman chose me because I at least had worked with women's health. Mm -hmm. And then from there, Randine became my mentor. And now that's all I see is infertility. Now, Shelley, when you made this decision, had you thought about using traditional Chinese medicine before, or was this new to you when you made that? It was new to me. Yeah, I'd heard about it, but I hadn't, you know, thought about using it for any other reason, really. Right, and it helped though because you're now 25 weeks along. It did. Yeah. Yes. Um, and are you still using this? Is this something that you think you'll go back to if you have problems? I, um, I guess back in December it was. I contacted. Learn again about migraine headaches. I've had a period of three or four weeks where I was having very bad migraine headaches. So mm -hmm. I went back in there a couple times for that and I felt great when really? I left. You know, because I'll, obviously you can't take anything. When just you're... Tylenol. Yeah. And it wasn't helping. I was icing myself. I was doing everything. And uh, as soon as I would leave the acupuncture office, I felt just elated and I had a beautiful night's sleep and wow. um, it was great. Okay, and so then, it's been good for you. Do you find that most women have that reaction and become repeat? Clients? Yes, in, in our practice at AccuBalance, we only work with reproductive health. And so we start with them in the preconception phase. Mm -hmm. And then once they're pregnant, we like to work with them until their birth. And so if they have a breech baby, for example, morning sickness, even threatened miscarriage, these are the things we work with. And then at the end of term, we do some treatments to just what's called cervical ripening. So they kind of go um, into the um, they reach their due date on time and also to help with the pain management of delivery. Wish I'd known about that with the whole morning sickness <laughs> thing. That would have been nice. All right, well, listen, thank you very much for stopping by and talking to us today. Stay with us. We have more breakfast television right after this. It is 7.54. I had terrible. Well, to see my sweetheart last night around about 10, she said, hold.